G. Lindelof videos, subtracting polynomials. So we are just talking about the fact that my concern often is that when students see this, they, because they've been brainwashed so many times that they might think this is multiplication. So the first thing I would say to everybody is identify the operator. An operator, you've heard of order of operations. So an operator is what type of math is it? So the operator here is subtraction and it's right there, isn't it? So before you do anything, when you're taking the SAT or when you're taking college algebra, whatever it is that you're taking, make sure that you identify what you're actually being asked to do, not what you assume you're being asked to do. We discussed the fact that my second concern is that often what will happen is people will just bring down these parentheses and the negative sign will just get attached to the first term here. But you need to distribute this completely. The other thing I would like to say to you is that I always think of this this negative sign as a negative 1. So I think of this, I do, I think of this as a negative 1 right here. So I'm like, okay, I have this negative 1 here, and I'm going to distribute this negative 1 through. It is actually true. That's not me making up some uh, mnemonic device or whatever. So I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to distribute this thing to here, to here, and to here. Before I do that, Joe, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this first set of parentheses. So I'm going to I'm trying to figure out are these parentheses satisfied? That is, can I get rid of them? There's no number in front. There's no ne there's no negative one. There's no number at all in front. Is there? There's also no exponent. And when I say that, Damien, there is an exponent to the first power. So that's the condition under which parentheses are satisfied. So if this said was to the second power here. I couldn't drop the parentheses because of the exponent. If there was a 5 here, well, I couldn't say the parentheses were satisfied because there's a number out here. But none of that exists, does it? And therefore, if you ever wonder, you ever think of it like, oh, my God, how do I know when I can? Nobody's ever thought that. Like, when, can I, when am I allowed to get rid of my parentheses? Well, that's the condition. So you see, are they satisfied? These parentheses are not. These parentheses here are satisfied, so I can just drop them. I'm going to actually rewrite this just so you can see it, but I'm going to get 4y squared plus 9y minus 5. I changed nothing. But here, these parentheses here, this set of parentheses right here, will are not satisfied because there's a negative 1 in front of them. So the parentheses aren't satisfied until I satisfy the parentheses. So I'm going to do that. Negative 1 times negative 4y squared is negative 4y squared. Jill, this is where I freak out that people are not going to pursue it further because... I have to take this negative 1 and distribute it here also, don't I? So negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5y, isn't it? And negative 1 times positive 3 is negative 3. Can we agree that the parentheses are satisfied now? And therefore, they're, they're taken down, and we can do what? Combine like terms. Yeah, GLT, combine like terms, gather like terms, however you want to describe it, Damien. That's exactly it, isn't it? So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to look. This is, and this is why I had to be careful here. I'm looking at y's, but not only y, but y squared. Both of these conditions have to meet. So it has to be the same variable to the same power. Can we agree on that? So we have four y squareds here, negative four y squareds there for a total of zero. So I'm not going to do anything. However, Einstein did say y, remember what's written down, so I'll tick those off as being used. Are we in agreement on that? Now I'm going to look again for my next variable, and it's y to the first power. I look, here's another set of y to the first power. There are positive 9 of them here, positive 5 of them here, for a total of 14 y to the first. Done and done. Leaving me, believe it or not, Joel, this is act, these are actually y to the zero powers, because we know anything to the zero power is 1. So there's negative 5 here and negative 3 here for a total of negative 8. Should I write this exponent here? No. It's kind of weird looking. So there's my answer, I think, isn't it? All good? Should we do a second problem, or is that enough? Second problem. Let's go. Same thing here. Parentheses here. Are, I'm checking my parentheses. They're satisfied. This is to the first power. No number out front. So I'm just going to rewrite 5b minus 6b cubed plus 2b to the fourth going to distribute this negative 1 to here 
to here and to here because I realize that the mo one of the most common problems in all algebra is numbers not being distributed completely any. So negative 9b cubed, negative 4b to the fourth, and what? Positive 7, right? Gather like terms. I want to put these in order, so I want the I want the variable with the highest exponential value. I think that's 4. So there are, there's 4b to the 4th here. There are 2b's to the 4th here. For a total of, oh, there's, this is negative. So what do we get here? Negative 2b to the 4th. I use this. Can I use this? Negative 15b cubed. Is that right? 5b. Is that true? And right. And this is exactly why Einstein would have done it this way, Audrey, is that if I forget something, it's the thing that's not checked off. So there it is, so plus 7. All right?